Wait, that can't be right for that skill check. Our captain's a traitor! Guys, chill. Chill, chill guys. It's not me. There's deep ones everywhere. Guys, can you trust me? <laughs> the captain of our ship is the traitor! Battlestar Galactica was the epic social deduction game to play, with the bad guys, the Cylons, hiding upon this sci-fi ship to destroy humanity. All of it. Now this three expansion big box package has been transformed into the Lovecraftian unfathomable. Instead of robotic aliens following you through space, it's water monsters. And the traders on board are these half-human, half-demonic hybrids to reveal themselves at the right time to sink your ship. So let's get into this unfathomable. Here's a quick how to play. We're all on this ship together, just sailing and having a jolly good time, while these monsters around the ship, and some of them have made it in the ship, are trying to sink us. We are trying to get 12 distance and then move the ship again to win so we can make it safely to shore. To move the boat, we want to move this movement tracker up. And once it hits the end, then the captain of the ship will pick one of these two cards to decide where we're going. Now, who's this captain? Yeah, that could be you. Everyone gets to pick a character. But after you pick that character, there's a loyalty card giving out. You're probably a good guy. But if not, you're part deep one. You thought you were human, but now you have an inexplicable compulsion to help the creatures attacking the ship. <laughs> For the actual game, on each turn, everyone will draw their hand of cards, then do two actions like moving and doing a space thing. Then you'll draw a mythos card for everyone to work together to accomplish. For that, everyone secretly contributes cards that matches the colors of that card to hit the number. Otherwise, you all fail and get the bad thing on it. But hey, remember, remember if you're bad, then you may want to put down the wrong color when putting cards face down, and those will count as negative values. Whether you fail or succeed the mythos check, you do the bottom right corner, which activates some type of bad guy. So here we would have this big mommy hydra attack the ship, now it's partly damaged. The second symbol will move up the ship marker to get us a bit closer to land to win the game, or advance this ritual spell which is this crazy nuke the humans have been home go roam chanting up, and once completed, blast everyone who is not on the inside of the ship, including friendly passengers who probably need to be rescued first. If you're human, the good guys, you want to be trying to sniff out the traitor while making sure you get to land safely. If one of your resources, like fuel, goes to zero, or the ship is completely damaged, you're screwed and humans all die. Oh, and also if the deck gets completely overrun by the deep ones and you can't spawn anymore, yeah, then you lose and that's a lot of gross slime on the ship. But uh, we're of course, we're the traitor here, right? So there's all sorts of ways to subtly sabotage the humans, like saying some misleading remark or actually being really selfish and not helping the team. Whatever you do, you don't want to get caught because you eventually want to reveal yourself. You do a crazy reveal ability for your character and now you are this slime creature still mucking around the ship, still able to attack other characters. And of course they can attack you back on their turn. And that's the bare bones of the game. You just take turns, doing two actions, your ship is slowly moving forward throughout, you're defending against deep ones, and then you want to make sure these resources don't tick too low. That is, if you're not a bad guy. And then wait, there's more. Once you hit six distance, everyone's dealt a new loyalty card that can potentially override your existing one because if you get dealt a bad guy card, you're now the team bad guy for the rest of the game. Let's splash into this review of this Battlestar Galactica revival with the pros. And does this game look and feel pretty good? There's a good amount of art to just look at to get you into the 1913 mood of this doomed ocean liner. There's plenty of decks of cards with work done on aesthetic, especially for the backs. There's good character portraits and then the countless items in the game. Of course, minis are in the picture for the deep one fish dudes and then the much bigger mother Hydra and father Dagon, Dagon, Dagon. 
dead gone. The green for all minis just totally works here. And maybe you might not even want to paint these. And the player aids, man, these are great. One side talks about all your possible actions, what happens in the brig, which is ship jail, and even how revealing works. Even better, if you want more info on the board, just flip to the back. This side explains every single space on the board, and we wish more bigger games had this. The rulebook also has an introductory game, which is very much appreciated, where it has suggested starting characters for more balanced compositions. And in this first game, you don't even get loyalty cards until the end of the first round, so people can get familiar with the game. And if you got any questions, there's an appendix that answered everything that came up for us. Okay, let's delve into the characters. There's 10 of them, and each of them feels nuanced and flavorful thanks to their complete personal backstory on the back. Now, it may look like they only have two abilities on a first glance, but actually, each of them comes with two more cards, an item, and also a once per game ability. So it's really like each character has four abilities. So if we look at Jan Lafarge, the engineer, she's all about being in the boiler room to try to advance the ship forward. She can even sacrifice the ship's integrity to move even more forward. More coal, right? More coal. And then she can just blow up places if she happens to be a hybrid. You'll likely just find her repairing much of the ship with her toolkit and then sitting tight in the boiler room. And no ship is complete without its captain. So the main captain dude, Kilani Tatupu, Ta Tatupu? He's really good at raising his megaphone to tell the idiot passengers to Stop goofing around on the dangerous deck so you don't die! Thank you, and don't mind the slight turbulence from these deep ones climbing aboard, thank you very much. Kilani also has a nice flexible way to add cards after cards are revealed for a skill check. And if he reveals as a hybrid, everyone gets sad and goes a little more insane because our captain was actually some demonic monster. Then there's this edgy guy, William Boleg, who is this magical apprentice. Apprentice of what you ask? Yep, the freaking occult. And he will be most games resident keeper of the tome, this second special role after the captain. And this keeper gets access to the book of spells. So in addition to having this elder sign where he can just cast spells twice, he can also be looking through this special deck to get more things to cast. There's seven more characters here, from surgeons, to master at arms, to even stowaways, so there's no lack of diversity here. Let's talk about the items now. You'll get one for your character, which is kind of like that fourth ability, but also there's this item deck you can draw from. It's just a decent way to build advantage. Like how about getting a medicine ball to make you permanently stronger, you draw more cards. And then of course you can draw guns to make you stronger to attack deep ones or maybe other humans on the ship. The fact that you can move to the cargo hold to draw two of these and then pick one just really adds flavor and also widens up the scope of things you can do. Like if you draw a repeating rifle, you can just, well, go to the side of the deck of the ship and just Bang the bang, shoot down on those deep ones, trying to climb up. This ship we're trapped on actually feels like a real ship with its outside deck and six interior spaces. And these interior spaces are filled with interesting actions. Like how about going to reporting to the bridge to look at the future by looking at the top two cards of one deck. And just like in any ship, you can send people to ship jail, the brig. So you can go to the captain's cabin to try to convince the crew to send someone to jail, even including the captain of the ship himself. Let's look at the exterior of the ship, the deck, which is the more dangerous area. This is right next to the waters where deep ones jump out from. And then the deck is just quickly teeming with these little green dudes. Then those helpless passengers can be exposed on this outside area and need to be rescued to the inside of the ship before they die from attacks. And remember this second track, the ritual track? This will nuke everything on the outsides of the ship, including on the deck, meaning that if you're not careful, both deep ones and passengers can die off of this ritual spell. And if you're on the deck, you can get hurt too. Let's praise these skill cards. Now these are just so fun to draw because they all do something written on them, besides just playing them face down for these mythos skill checks. These are stuff you can do on your turn or you can play anytime. Let's say someone is fighting anywhere. Well, give them some combat training for reroll. 
and they can be anywhere, you can be anywhere, you can still play the card. Or you can just cast a shriveling spell to attack a deep one anywhere on the ship, even if you're not in the area. So you can just attack a deep one outside on the deck without moving. Or there's this one, Determination. If you want to help or hurt a skill check after cards are revealed, you can hurt it too. There's actually only three different types of cards in each of these decks, but the text on them, again, is almost always useful. We also really like the inclusion of ways to draw outside your normal skill set of cards, where you can use some cards to draw other things, and that can give you access to any color. It's like any character can do anything here. It also gives you more opportunity to sabotage checks, and then saying, oh, hey, hey, come on, I couldn't have played that. I don't even draw it in my normal skill set, okay? And Unfathomable does a really good job of giving the trader so many ways to sabotage the humans to eventually sink the ship. There's the constant skill checks that everyone is doing at the end of their turns. And if you're bad, maybe you just want to sneak in some negative cards once in a while. But sometimes the two random cards are also negative. Uh-oh, uh, now the group is on a witch hunt because they know someone here put in a bad card. And then you as the bad guy gotta deflect blame and use your own haphazard reasoning. This is in-depth social deduction done so well because there's partial information, you know who put in cards and who didn't, and you know what cards everyone draws, and so good players are able to backtrack well to remember what cards people have in their hands. And this can make good, deducing human groups require even more creative trader sabotage and cover-ups, which is super exciting. And remember these cards that do something special? Now, many of these special things can be used for the trader too. On those big turns, you can subtract from rolls to have the deep ones actually hit the good guys. As a hidden trader too, it can be really fun to go to the galley and be like, hey guys, uh, I'm gonna draw a bunch of cards to help us out later. Oh, uh, uh oh, I drew so many cards that we lost the difficult die roll for food. Oops, well, uh, good thing we can use these cards for good, right? I'm with the team on this. Meanwhile, you're actually just barely going to contribute to any skill check and just stock up on rerolls for your actual teammates, the deep ones. There's plenty of teamwork opportunities through this card, Coordinated Effort, where you give someone else an action on your turn. Wow, this seems very familiar to BSG players, where you're trying to optimize your team's efficiency by letting someone play out of turn. But if you play this card on a... A uh, hybrid, then you're giving the other team another action. Oh, and look, they revealed themselves even when they said they were gonna save all the passengers, and they rain fire to kill all the good people on that space, and they have the next turn. That's not good for us. The test of these long social deduction games is what happens after someone gets revealed, and you find out that, yeah, they actually were the traitor this entire time. This is especially more so if they happen to suck at lying, or if they just made a slip. And Battlestar Cthulhuca does this pretty well. A big part of that is that you're, as a revealed character, still on the ship. And you get to move around. Like, you're still in the game. See, no one ever dies in this game. So humans and revealed traitors will do a shuffle of running around the ship. They can fight each other with guns or spells, or you can just have a traitor just blockading your ship's engines. Plus, the traders have access to this treachery card deck, which are cards that are always bad for the humans, like mind controlling deep ones on your space. There's a really cool combination factor with these treachery cards, where the traders can mix these with the normal skill cards to do all sorts of combos. Remember, everyone gets two actions a turn, so there's always a bit of a toss up on what the trader is gonna do. Is he gonna attack the humans with the rampage card for three possible hits? Is he gonna cast a treachery spell? Maybe after the humans do a skill check, he'll make the skill check harder. A fun combo is to cast a lore spell to move the deep ones, and then immediately activate them with a treachery card. Yeah, that's, uh, that's some crazy damage. Now let's talk about this Mythos deck, the one you draw a card from at the end of every human's turn. These outcomes actually make sense with the flavor of the game, and if you decide not to read pass and fail outcomes before the skill check is resolved, like we do, it's a bit easier to predict that the ship may get slowed down from engine failure. This Mythos deck also adds in Captain or Keeper of the Tome decision making or even for specific characters and that all adds more flavor to your journey. And then some of these Mythos cards are actually pretty funny. There's a chance to have this stupidly exorbitant feast in the galley even though we're running out of food 
And then you can even have homemade fuel for your ship by burning the chairs on the deck. <laughs> Jeez. Unfathomable is just this theme meets gameplay of 1913 cruise ship gone wrong while you're stuck on a ship with your friends. And some of your friends are actually uh, these half uh, monster things trying to kill you. There's just as sea events happening left and right with these mythos cards and then you'll find some items in the cargo and then the ship just continues to slowly break down while passengers die left and right and there's a captain. Yeah, you're on a freaking ship and it's gone wrong. Maybe you go to the ship's chapel to advance the ritual. It is your only hope against Mother Hydra railing against your ship, and your ship loses some sanity as a result of going to the chapel. Or you're frustrated at passengers who are wandering out on deck to investigate these deep ones. Or Ishmael Marsh, who has the Book of Dagon for some reason, takes the second oath to truly become indoctrinated, as he reveals himself to send out his deep one army. Well, time to take the shotgun to shoot these monsters. Will the Lanska make it to shore as the ship goes from waypoint to waypoint? That is, from deserted islands to party and get free food, or gigantic waves to kill passengers, and I can't stop thinking about the Titanic here. And those creatures in the water actually move backwards every time you move the ship forward, which is a really neat touch. And all throughout this, who is that traitor? Who is the traitor? Who is the, who messed up the skill check? Is our captain really a bad guy? The keeper of the tome is also really suspect. Who is the traitor we need to throw on the brig? Who is the traitor? Who is the traitor? I'm the traitor. <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah. Thank you for blaming him the whole time. So I reveal as William Bowleg. So I know we got all these deep ones on deck, huh? These are my homies. So uh, let's go ahead and move the ritual track down too with my once per game. And now I'm gonna draw all my treachery ones and let's have this deep one army move out. But it's not a completely smooth ride though, so let's get to the cons. We got some gameplay cons here. To kick us off, it's almost never worth it to attack the revealed hybrids, the revealed bad guys, on the ship. First off, attacking them is never guaranteed. So there's a chance that your turn does nothing, especially if the trader has access to these combat training rerolls. If you do fail to attack them when moving to their space, well, then they can attack you on their turn without moving, which is incredibly efficient for them. This makes it so you always want to go for the guaranteed play of saving the passengers on the ship instead of attacking the hybrid. If you do actually successfully attack a hybrid, they get moved to the brig which doesn't seem as strong as it should be. Sure, they're slowed down considerably from moving around the ship, but they can still do two actions. Combine this with how most of the treachery cards give you some special nasty action that doesn't require you to be in a certain place to use them. So the revealed hybrid can sit pretty in the brig, just cross-legged casting his spells after the humans work tirelessly to hit him. So the game should have made the die roll easier to hit hybrids and then make it so that they can only do one action in the brig. We also got something linked to attacking this card, Rampage, that lets you attack like crazy. So you want to use it to attack like crazy all the deep ones swarming your ship, but it doesn't give you any bonuses to attacking the deep ones. You rarely have an incentive to just play it for its ability because it's totally possible to just miss all your die rolls still. Compare this to its spell counterpart, Lesser Banishment, which lets you move all the deep ones from anywhere to anywhere while you stand anywhere on the ship. And so, wow, that was really good. And moving them back is totally fine because the ritual is gonna kill them all off anyways. Rampage really needs to just have a plus two to all its die rolls or so to make it worth playing. Now onto the nitpicks. So this board, while it's detailed and all, uh, the coloring doesn't quite seem to line up for what this game is going for. There's a little too much orange and green going on that doesn't feel very 1913's Lovecraftian horror. This can also make the rooms seem a little too similar when viewed from afar, but we really just wish it had something darker and more sinister, like this boat from Mansions of Madness, 
look, there's no green in the room and the wood looks a lot more dead. That feels a lot more like Lovecraft. Now, when we get to the cards, we are a bit disappointed by the lack of art on the mythos and skill cards. Granted, putting art on all the mythos cards would be a huge undertaking seeing how there's 70 of them. But at least some simple art for skill cards would have been appreciated to break them up since you're looking at them so often and you often have a ton in your hand. And then if you're playing in a dark room, the red and orange ones can be a little tricky to distinguish from afar during skill checks. Gameplay nitpick time. As interesting as being a trader is in this game, uh, we have to warn that in the long haul after revealing like many hours down the line, being a revealed trader may not be that interesting. This goes for general player dynamic and also mechanics. In late late game, say when the ship just needs one more jump, the game can slow down considerably as humans are trying to optimize really hard on their turns, talking amongst each other freely since all the traders have been revealed, and the two traders just sit there with less to do compared to humans, as they can't use any board spaces or character abilities anymore. Then they can only play one card per skill check, so that's not as interesting either. Or how about if you're locked in the brig? Yeah, you still have two actions, but it might be inefficient to discard cards to move out, so you spend the rest of the game in the brig without movement as an option. Well, okay, this is just kind of the nature of having a two to four hour social deduction game with set teams where everyone is supposed to reveal themselves by the end of the game. It's just up to the traders on when they're actually revealing themselves. That's the thing with social deduction. This end game trader boredom potentially is so group and game state reliant. Some human groups want to be more precise with their turns and take longer. So the game takes longer and they want to have more teamwork or some traders might just mess up and miss opportunities on the board too. And sometimes games just have a lot of fun chaos happening. Sometimes they don't. We will say that Unfathomable does the long tail of being revealed a lot better than its predecessor, BSG, because you're still on the ship and can attack humans. And then you can combo off of using two actions, two actions, a turn, while drawing normal skill cards. Okay, last nitpick, this FFG cavern strikes again, and it's not really an answer. And you'll also have to supply your own plastic bags for a lot of the cards. Actually, speaking of the cards, uh, you probably want to get sleeves, especially for some of these smaller cards like the Waypoint and the Item Decks, because, man, without these sleeves, they are really thin. Like, uh, yeah, you might as well just sleeve all the cards in this game while you're at it. Now it's time for a tentative score on Unfathomable. We've only played this twice. And one of them was a very fast bad guy win. Oh shit, yeah, I see you. Oh, he died. Oh, 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 oh my god. god. But you guys have requested this so much, so many times, and we wanted to get a review out pretty reasonably fast to you guys. So by critically evaluating our pros and cons, Unfathomable is going to get a 9 out of 10. It is tentatively excellent. Now, we're more okay giving out the score because a, we've played countless amounts of social deduction games as a comparison, and B, it's pretty hard to talk about balance in a social deduction game. Unfathomable is a two to four hour social deduction game with all sorts of luck that can happen where cards will flip differently. Remember, items are a part of the game now. So yeah, if someone draws this freaking grenade, that's a big swing. And then how are people gonna pace their lying in sabotage, right? So considering this formula, nothing here was egregious with the balance. Long time Battlestar Galactica fans can just tell that Unfathomable very much has the heart of their beloved game. The once per game abilities, constant crises to a ship with skill cards, their specific roles where you can vote to put others in jail, bad guys are surrounding the ship, all wrapped up with the constant tension of not wanting the traders to reveal themselves at the wrong time. Battlestar Galactica was a board game with many mechanical nods specifically based off of a TV show, where a lot of the Cylon things were harder to comprehend compared to Unfathomables. Hey look, we're on a 1913 ship, 
there's a bunch of creepy fish dudes climbing up and some people are half fish, half human and yeah, go walk around the ship and you can find guns and shoot people. And Unfathomable is way more flexible with player count too. They actually handled even player counts with this cultist loyalty card. Here, you're essentially a traitor, but can only win at the very, very end of the game. This leads to a lot of interesting board states for four to six players, where in Battlestar Galactica, oh, there's this sympathizer card that, oh, oh, oh God. Immediately reveal your loyalty card in a social deduction game. Yeah, super glad they patched up that four and six player account, but again, we haven't played with the cultists, so can't speak much more on that. We cannot understate how much more thoughtful and consistently combo-y it is to be a traitor and unfathomable. The very fact that you're on this ship after revealed helps keeps traitors actively engaged. Whereas in Battlestar, to keep with the theme, you would revive on a side ship where you barely moved at all. Gone are some of the hyper-specific BSG things that only fans would know about. And there's no more huge FTL jumps as the ship flew into space with one tracker. Now there's two of these tracks that everyone has control over. Gone is a militaristic lock of pilots who were the only ones that could fight. And there's certainly less emphasis on the president role, where in Unfathomable, that president is just some dude with a book of spells that doesn't add that much complexity. Having played BSG with all of its expansions for many years and now come into Unfathomable here, we say 100% buy this over BSG, even ignoring price as a factor. Unless, unless you have a group that knows how to play BSG with all the expansions you want and all love the theme. But really, it's 2021 and Battlestar just hasn't been that relevant as a theme. It just, it just hasn't. So while saying, oh, you fracking Cylon, oh, oh my God. That's pretty fun for us BSG veterans and BSG fans like me. For the rest of the people, what the heck is a Cylon? What is a Cylon? Does anyone know what a Cylon is besides me? Anyone? Anyone? So say we all, anyone? It's just one box, one rule book for a balanced and shorter experience. And then at BSG, you had to buy at least one expansion to balance the monster spawn. Now, even the treachery deck is in one box. Oh, and, and did you know that BSG Starbuck makes an appearance in this game? There's no tokens you really need to fiddle with. Minis are big and chunky. At the end of the day, this game is basically all card touching. And then it's FFG. So if you're concerned about replayability with the Mythos cards or you want more characters, expansions are gonna be coming, probably. They're probably coming. For those who haven't played Battlestar Galactica, well, this type of game does have its inherent risks. See, when it does work, yes, this medium of board games is where you can play your friends as much as you're playing the game. And after three hours of lying, you can say, ha I was the guy lying this whole time. I was just screwing you guys over. I was just sabotaging all those checks. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move around and summon my fish army. Eyes can constantly dart with all the tells, bluffs, reveals, and maybe your hand is getting shaky holding all these skill cards after lying for this long. But who knows what will happen in this, this journey, this journey across the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where anything can happen. Maybe your ship doesn't draw a waypoint advance for three turns and your boiler room has been randomly damaged. Well, that's an unfortunate human story. Or maybe the traitor is revealed too early and the game feels like a long team game. Maybe the traitors don't have to do anything because the humans hilariously break themselves. Whatever the case, it's shorter than BSG and you can actually buy it at a store. So now is the time to try Grand Social Deduction. And hey, even if you suck at lying, Unfathomable just gives you way more agency over your bad guy, Deep One Army. And isn't it nice to play as the bad guys for once in Lovecraft? Personally, I find Unfathomable to be an average time, a five out of 10. That's actually really high for a full-blown hidden role social deduction game when it comes to my personal scores. Like, I'm actually down to playing Unfathomable if everyone else wants to. For context, I personally find Battlestar Galactica to currently be a two out of 10 terrible time because it's too long, too bloated, and really ugly looking to me. Except the Cylon ships. Plus we kind of wrung that game dry of new memories and value after playing it, 
out of the amount of times that we did play it. But yeah, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've turned pretty jaded against good guy, bad guy, hidden role mechanics because one, I don't think they make for balanced gameplay, and two, they lose their novelty really, really fast. However, Unfathomable does have a lot of viable options to take on your turn and combos you can do, which makes the gameplay feel much more engaging from turn to turn instead of just autopiloting your role like in BSG. I also really like Unfathomable's art, the minis, the overall presentation, and especially the readability. The player aids are probably a little wordy, but it's better to have too much than too little in my opinion. But yeah, my personal gripes with Unfathomable are unfortunately kind of just baked into the design because the game is what it is. Long social deduction games where games can take 30 minutes to three hours? Oof, balance is wacky? Yep. Like seriously, the game where I destroyed everyone as a hybrid, I was doing insane dumb shit with my skill card actions and no one wanted to attack me because, well, if I go to the brig, I guess I'll play my busted action card, so why bother? Especially because I was threatening the board by spawning deep ones everywhere or moving them around, which really makes the enemies the immediate threat and not my character. It feels like if you're a human, you should just avoid fighting at all costs. Just banishment, ritual, never attack the revealed hybrid. But if you are the revealed hybrid, you're free to attack when the moment calls for, which just, that just feels weird. And you know me, I love my fighting when there's actual conflict at hand, so what the fuck? Ultimately, Unfathomable is better than Balasar Galactica in every conceivable way, and it gets to the point way faster, which is why I am down to play more. But I also see it going down the BSG path, where after like five more games, I'm gonna be so done with it. But man, this game just makes me so jealous because I wish I got to play this back in high school instead of BSG. Like, it is so much better, it is not even funny. Those long summer days, we'd probably be able to get in multiple Unfathomable games in a day, but also have a much better time in those multiple games just because that's better gameplay. I cannot stress the gameplay improvements enough. Having both the Ritual Track and Travel Track instead of just travel, genius. Items and improvements? Fun as hell. Minis actually getting to move around on the ship. Positioning actually matters. The list just goes on and on. Look, I don't want to sour the party with my own personal tastes. If this is a game you're interested in, I'd recommend it in a heartbeat. But as a guy who's played a little too much of that to BSG back in the day, the sales of my boat are down. But for a lot of you who've never gotten to experience BSG, fucking get on that ship! Set sail, baby, because you're gonna have some great adventures. Now it's time for my personal score on Unfathomable. As a longtime BSG fan who sold it because I wasn't playing it anymore, this is gonna get a 6 out of 10. It's above average for me. Now this is definitely subject to change in the future because I feel still so conflicted on these long social deduction games still. Yes, they're utterly fantastic when firing all cylinders with the lying and then the suspicion and there's that mad rush of getting dealt the traitor card and reading it and your face is trying to be neutral while your mind's going like, oh my God, I'm the traitor. Oh, but I gotta be neutral about it. I gotta be neutral. And then who the heck is my other traitor? That's another fun thing to try to deduce while I have to stay hidden. But it really just feels too slow sometimes, especially when I'm not the traitor or a revealed traitor. It's always just two simple actions and I feel myself just waiting too much when it's not my turn. Again, this is really the case when the social deduction isn't happening and this is really group reliant. But as I wrote this review and saw all the trader possibilities and the cool items again and again, I couldn't stop help thinking about all these fun theories on how to win as a trader. So I definitely want to play Unfathomable again. I can see this game, like especially at four players, being way shorter than Battlestar Galactica. And if it was like two and a half hours, man, this would be at least a seven out of 10 for me. Yes, yes, I do miss a good amount of BSG, where it's definitely for my friends better that these theme specific things are gone because I've still yet to meet more than two people around my age who have even heard of the show. I am really missing that FTL jump in BSG here. In BSG, your backs were against the wall, all seemed lost, but then you had a crazy emergency jump, 
losing a lot of fuel, but now you're temporarily safe from all enemies and can take a much deserved breather. Or you could weave intrigue by threatening nukes as the admiral, or declaring martial law to become both the president and admiral. Unfathomable just doesn't have these super thematic BSG nods, and actually feels more generic to me overall. Again, why I want it to be shorter. These two tracks here, for the ritual and waypoint, just feel cute to me since they're both sharing the FTL jump effect that was this massive change in tempo I loved in BSG. Uh, and then the bad guy deep ones enter the ship, <sighs> no big deal, I can just cast a no penalty guaranteed spell to push them back. Okay, that was easy. In BSG, it was so, so bad when the enemies, the Centurions, actually entered Battlestar herself. Unfathomable just doesn't feel as epic to me. But to all my friends I'm playing with, well, this universal theme just opens up the possibility to be epic. A couple years ago, I rated BSG as my favorite game of all time. And now, I'm starting to see a little more clearly through that nostalgia of BSG that Long-term social deduction just isn't my favorite type of game I thought it once was. This is because I have so many other more consistently epic games I want to play, and I'm more and more guarded on my time to even start playing these long games. <sighs> I keep struggling with, am I actually just in love with the idea of a long social deduction game, rather than actually sitting down and playing them? When playing them, I often feel like the formula is too long for what the mechanics are, but I can't stop thinking about these games favorably when not playing. And it's so group reliant that maybe I haven't found that perfect group click yet? Truly an unfathomable dilemma. And I have to play this at four players and get back to you guys. And you guys may have seen these card holders, these Uber Snacks card holders throughout this review. These are really useful for just holding the cards nice and cleanly in front of you, so you don't have to, you know, fiddle with them, especially if you're all shaky as a trader like me, you can just put them down. Look at that, you can even make the longest card holder I've ever seen possible. I would really like to hear what you guys have to say about Unfathomable if you've played, or any ideas on just long social deduction in general. We gotta thank you to our friend for lending us this copy of Unfathomable to review, and also thank you to our patrons. We got Manuel G, Brian C, Clifford H, Aaron W, Max B, Bora, Jeremy M, C, Charlie P, Quentin S, M, S, Travis R, Amal, Wagon, Ryan T, Jennifer L, Maggi, Peter Z, Spinner 71, Ryan J, Brad G, Tiamo, Pierre and Mark A, James M, Evan B, Charles B Jr., Josh J, Baspar, Rado, Sophie, Reiner Z, Cole Nell, and Hudson T, Pearson B, Omar, F, M, Y, Ethan P, Bradley J, John C, Galvin V, Dirk S, SS Co, Alex L, Rob R, Sandra 22, Dave F, Josh R, Pat, Cyril C, Il Wayne, Kyle M, Amir H, and Right Left Spin. We also got two Mad Lads cardboard, we got ZL and Jeff L, we also got that guy right there, we also got our Mad Lady cardboard, we got Amy. That was Unfathomable, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this game, and yeah, see you guys later, yeah. Bye-bye. Unfathomable. Bye-bye. <laughs>